This video essay contains spoilers for all of the animated series Lego Monkey Kid. If you would like to watch the series, details will be in the description and pinned comment. When the heavenly pillar first began to fall, the goddess Nurwa sacrificed herself in order to save the world from its impending doom. Her sacrifice, with the help of the color stones, healed the pillar and maintained the universe's predictable, safe order. Upon her difficult choice, in order to protect future generations from the chaos that lay beyond a world without the pillar's protection, the goddess created the Great Cycle. This cycle was a set of rules, incidents, and even people that would reincarnate, repeat, and continue in a way that she could predict and control. The cycle looped the world's events to protect the world's inhabitants, Nurwa's quote-unquote children, from the unpredictability of the forces of the chaos. The events of the cycle were created to mirror each other. People's souls and even powers would remain, but not as they were in their previous life. Despite the changes in each version of the cycle's reality, all of them would end with a sacrifice to the heavenly pillar. But Nurwa needed someone to die at the end of each cycle, and that was where her mission fell apart. In the modern day, MK the Monkey Kid sacrificed himself to the heavenly pillar, but although he provided a working sacrifice, it was clear that something was wrong with this execution of the Great Cycle. When MK arrived in that realm between life and death, Nurwa implied that this was the first time that the cycle had been fully finished, as she only spoke of her own sacrifice and of MK's when talking to him. But she also said that she did not intend for the cycle to end now. Something had gone wrong with the Great Cycle, and it was not just the timing, but the subject. The nine-headed demon had awakened MK from his stone early as part of their plot. And so MK's existence in the events of season five was inherently chaotic and disrupting the cycle. If he was not supposed to even be conscious at this period of time, then the ideal version of this first cycle did not involve MK at all. The sacrifice had to be someone else, the only other character who could have replaced MK, Sun Wukong. When the sacrifice was occurring, he seemed to be aware of this fact, judging by how he had come from the same stone that MK did. And right before MK's sacrifice, he had immediately known that he could have fulfilled the same purpose and attempted to sacrifice himself in order to save the kid's life. If the Great Cycle was intended for someone other than MK, that means that Wukong was supposed to sacrifice himself years ago, but he refused. Wukong being the original defiant sacrifice draws several lines together about his character and backstory. First of all, his intense fear of death that drove most of his decisions, such as when he stole the peaches of immortality and ate them obsessively, possibly to ensure that they would actually work, when he crossed off his name in the Book of the Dead, and when he betrayed the Brotherhood at sight of sure lost against the Jade Emperor. Secondly, his intensity on following his own path. He was constantly trying to convince MK to go to third route if he didn't agree with any of the decisions that life gave him, and he preached a free spirit over that cursed idea of destiny. It also connects to his secrecy with MK, especially during season five. While Wukong has always hid information on their journeys, such as when he deliberately omitted the fourth ring of Samadhi back in season three, he still gave his companions something to drive their venture. In season five, Wukong refused to disclose any information, possibly because he just didn't know what to say. He claimed that MK wasn't ready to learn about his intended purpose. Maybe he was projecting his own fear of the sacrifice of the great cycle and his own coping mechanisms onto MK. Wukong tends to run away from his problems when he gets stressed, so he could have thought that MK would be better off if he never knew about his destined death. But MK had different ways of coping with stress. While he attempts to run away from his mind, it's always too loud for him, and he instead struggles with intrusive thoughts from his trauma. In season five, Wukong was uncomfortably silent and absent with MK because of his own experience with Nurwa and the Heavenly Pillar. Finally, the Great Cycle explains his backstory and life with the Journey to the West cast, and also the reincarnation detail explored in Season 4. Tang Sang Zhang, Zhu Bajie, Xia Wu Jing, and Ao Lie were all reincarnated in the, into the modern-day Tang, Pixie, Sandy, and Mei, something alluded to even within the intro of the show. If the Great Cycle was designed to reset itself after someone sacrificed themselves, if someone didn't sacrifice themselves and refused, 
it's possible that that choice would glitch the system. Not only were the Journey to the West cast able to die on their own times, rather than dying whenever this sacrifice was supposed to occur, but they were also reincarnated, continuing not as they are, as Nurwa stated. Tang, Pixie, Sandy, and Mei were all spirits intended for another rerun of the cycle, but they existed in the same universe as the Journey to the West cast because of the cycle's failure. It doesn't take a lot to trace this failed sacrifice back to Wukong, the only character who came from the same stone as MK and who spent time with both the Journey to the West cast and the current LEGO Monkey Kid friend group, or the Monkey Kids. It wasn't just Wukong that has been setting up this connection from the beginning, but every single reincarnated character. Wukong had effectively screwed up the Great Cycle by refusing to die, and thus allowed for reincarnation within the same reality to occur, rather than those spirits being saved for an alternate reality with a different sacrifice. However, Wukong's defiance doesn't come without its own pain. If he was supposed to sacrifice himself to the pillar and refused, the cycle would still require an appeasement, something to prevent the world from falling apart. The pillar needed a sacrifice that had the power to wield the color stones, and if it wasn't going to be Wukong, it had to be someone else. And the only other character that had similar powers to Wukong, other than MK, is Makak. The fandom already knows that one of the most significant parts of Makak's backstory was that he died a thousand years ago. Although the details of his death are unknown, the one clear piece of information is that Wukong killed Makak. If the pillar was breaking in the past, Macaque's death could have technically healed it if he was able to wield the stones. But Macaque would not have been able to appease the cycle, because even if the pillar got fixed, the cycle needed someone from Wukong's stone. If he had killed Macaque, it would have created a loophole that fixed the pillar, but did not reset the cycle. Wukong could have been so afraid of death that he murdered his best friend, quote unquote best friend, in order to hold Nurwa over and to ensure that everyone else would get to survive. Macaque's character moments all point to him being a false sacrifice, especially his interactions with Wukong. First of all, the two frequently make cruel comments about their similarities in power level. In The King, The Prince, and His Shadow, Season 3, Episode 9, there's a quick line where Wukong joked about Macaque having a lesser version of everyone else's powers. Initial analysis of this line makes it seem like a quick jab at Macaque's possible insecurity, but in the Macaque Season 1, Episode 9, Macaque said it would be so satisfying to kill Wukong with his own powers. He wasn't ashamed of having similar powers to Wukong, but it would make sense if his cause of death was attached to their power levels and their ability to hold the color stones, and the two of them frequently used the mention of their traumatic experience as a way to throw the other off their game in battle. Secondly, Macaque's deliberate inclusion in Season 5. For, if he was a decoy sacrifice, he would carry more thematic relevance in that season than meets the eye, and his inclusion in this season specifically was not random. Wukong, MK, and Macaque's grouping at the beginning of the season, driven by the nine-headed demon, would make so much more sense if it was because Macaque had first-hand experience with the Great Cycle, and how his death went against the Cycle's laws and brought in chaos. While he didn't do anything wrong on his own, his life was inherently entwined with chaos and the Cycle, and thus he would be a valuable piece for the nine-headed demon's plan. Not to mention, the decision to make Season 5 the one to finally show a more active glimpse of Macaque's death. Out of all the seasons, even when the previous season, Season 4, was specifically about traumatic memories from the past. That scene was shown in Season 5 because Macaque's death had greater significance to the Great Cycle than it did the Scroll of Memory. If Macaque had been a false sacrifice, then that would explain the Nine-Headed Demon's odd fascination with him. They don't treat Mei, Pigsy, Tang, or Sandy specially at all, even though they were absolutely forces to be reckoned with and altogether could stand against them in battle. But they are obsessed with Macaque, going so far as to ask him about his power and who he made a deal with. Initial belief might be that Macaque had interacted with some sort of chaos monarch to get his powers, 
maybe the person who introduced the nine-headed demon to the chaos. But the issue with that is, Macaque didn't understand this deal question at all. If he truly had been caught with a mystery from his past, the angles of the shot would have been far more dramatic. They would focus on his facial expressions. But the focus of the cinematography isn't on Macaque's reaction, but rather how the nine-headed demon is toying with him, judging by how they are both equal in size, but the angle helped to solidify the demon's control. And besides, the fandom already knows who Macaque has made a deal with. The Lady Bone Demon! His entire arc in Season 3 was about attempting to escape her control, and how he had made a deal with her, stating that if she brought him back from the dead, he would help her towards her destiny. Maybe the Nine-Headed Demon wasn't asking about just Macaque's power, but also his health, the simple fact that he was alive. That would recontextualize everything. Because if the demon was asking, who did you make a deal with to bring you back to life? No one can escape their fate as a sacrifice, but you did. How? You're not the harbinger of chaos. That would make sense. The demon most likely didn't know that Macaque was not supposed to fulfill the role of the sacrifice and that it should have been Wukong. They were simply confused by his existence. Macaque's odd relationship with fate, the cycle, and chaos were foreshadowed even further in how his powers were switching from their shadowy purple nature to the orange light of the chaos. It's possible that if his shadows turned orange, that they had always had chaos embedded within them that was awakening due to the breaking of the cycle on MK's sacrifice. When you consider Macaque's powers an altered version of chaos, the depiction of his death in season 3 episode 4, The Winning Side, could have been displaying how the chaos became a permanent part of his power because of the failed sacrifice. That shot in season 5 of his power changing colors was the most comprehensive evidence for this theory yet, because the only other character shown to possibly be able to wield the chaos is MK. Even the nine-headed demon had to rely on MK in order to achieve the world of the chaos. In the final shot of season 5, the orange light encircled MK's staff, implying that his powers were now connected to the chaos. And the animators even snuck in a small detail. Macaque was the only one to spot the orange power. If this theory is true, Macaque and MK had both died and played the role of the sacrifice in order to take the fall for Wukong. And that was not how the cycle was supposed to go. The two of them were able to return to the world, but now they were caught between an odd place, where they were never supposed to be the sacrifice, but they had still fulfilled the role at some point, and at the same time had defied it and came back to life. Wukong's inability to sacrifice himself had allowed the chaos to seep in when Macaque died, which would have exposed the nine-headed demon to the chaos for the first time, and full-on opened the cage when MK died. Macaque was a sacrifice that appeased the pillar but failed the cycle. He was a decoy. MK was a sacrifice that appeased both but was not intended for that version of the world and was instead destined to become the harbinger of chaos. Wukong was supposed to sacrifice himself to check all of those boxes and save the world, but he either couldn't or wouldn't. These three characters were all focused on in season five, mystery shrouding every conversation they would have, and those brief scenes that they had with each other were setting up this chaotic connection that shifts the way every character is perceived. But if Wukong has been able to get away from his problems for years, forcing Macaque to take his place and being unable to stop MK from taking his, maybe he won't be able to run forever. Maybe in the future, he'll finally have to face his wrongs. After all, living forever is a very long time.